Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Zoom so you can attend a meeting with an Android phone. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get on Google Play so you can install the program. And so I have the Play Store icon here. Yours could be anywhere so I can't help you with that bit but then you need to search for Zoom. And Zoom Cloud Meetings is what you want to join. And just click Install. Now this will take a little while, but it's only 28 megabytes, so it's not too bad. I should mention before you install that you may want to make sure you're on the wireless connection, so you've got a faster connection and you're not going to use up any data. But for me, it's quite fast. In fact, you get a status symbol you can see there. It's 25% loaded already, so it's going to go through. And this is going to load the Zoom application on your mobile phone so that you can then take part in a Toastmasters meeting. This software is free. Only your club needs to pay for the main software of the person who we are all connecting to. You don't need to pay anything at your end. There we are, it's finished. And I can now click on the open to open up the Zoom meeting. So I'm now ready to go. I can click join meeting and all I need is that nine digit number of the meeting I wish to join, which for me is 532, 589, 0714. I'm going to start remembering that number. Now, if your club is taking the advice I've given and they are using the personal connection account at all times and not declaring new meetings each time, that number should be the same for every single meeting. So I can now join the meeting, although you can see I've got a personal na name of Galaxy Note 9. You might want to change that to your name. For me, I'm going to leave it like that because then I know it's the mobile phone coming in. We've got a option for don't connect with the audio and turn off my video. Well, we're going to need to turn them both on to get permission. So we'll leave that blank for now and just join the meeting to start with. And the first thing we have to agree to is the privacy terms. So I'll just agree those. And you might have heard the ding dong, uh, depending how my recording has worked, the fact that I have appeared. And you can see my picture is now on the main screen. But I haven't got a video on, so it's just got my name. I'm going to flip that back to myself on the main control so that I can talk to you. <coughs> Meanwhile, on the phone, we've been told that we have to get permissions. So we've been warned that by Zoom. So I hit got it. And I'm now asked to give permission for Zoom to use the audio. Otherwise, you can't talk on the site. And then I will also choose how I'm going to connect. So I will do call via device audio in other words the audio on my phone and there I am and, there I am. and now you can hear, an echo, can hear an echo because I'm now talking through my phone, through my phone into, the zoom, into the zoom which of course which I'm, course hosting I'm hosting on my computer, on my computer. So, so I'm going to go, going in to go as, admin, as admin and I'm afraid I'm going to, mute, I'm myself. Going to mute myself there we are but also want to test the video now, normally you wouldn't have to turn the audio off because normally you wouldn't be in the same room. So let's test the video. Now, the first thing I've got to warn you is when you're asked to test the video, you are, again, have to, you're going to be prompted by the system the first time you do it to allow you access to that part of your phone. So if I hit start video, you can see I've got another, pi another Im uh, image up saying allow zoom to take pictures well it actually just means effectively it means allow zoom to use your camera so i need to allow it and i now have a little picture of me in the bottom left hand corner which is my camera and i can prove that by putting my finger over the lens and you can see it goes red so that's me on the camera now if you want to see that camera uh, differently you can press on it and look it swaps us around so now i'm on the camera but the first thing I need to say to you before we go any further about cameras is I'm holding it in portrait mode up, 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 right. 
whereas everybody else's cameras are going to be in landscape mode sideways so really I need to turn my phone round to the side uh, get rid of that Toastmasters message that's come in and have it sideways like that and I also probably want to sit it somewhere because I don't really want to be holding the phone the whole time so how about that that looks good doesn't it I'm very impressed with that and of course cameras on phones are really high quality so although I'm concerned about the wireless connection and the mobile phone not being as powerful as a computer. As far as the picture is concerned, you get a really good image, which is why I wouldn't be against people wanting to use their mobile phone in a meeting. So that's the good news. The bad news is you've only got a small mobile phone screen. So although the other options are there, they're a bit more tricky to get to. If I click on the screen anywhere, you can see I get all the messages and, and uh, controls that I want. So if I press it again to remind it again, I can unmute can myself. Unmute myself. I get the echo, so I'll turn it off. Uh, I've got the video. I've got the ability to share my screen. I can hit on participants. Whoops, if I hit it quick enough. And unfortunately now the phone turns around the other way right and it shows me the participants. But from participants, I can hit the chats button and I have a chance to do text chat with other people in the meeting. Please don't do it during the meeting when everybody's talking. But if you need to get a message to people, that's available there. I'm going to close that again though. And I then have to close participants. So you go from participants, from video into participants, into chat, and then back out again. The other controls are unfortunately hidden behind the more button. So if I press the more button, I got the clap icon. So I can put a clap on my video. I think it lasts for about five seconds, but it's a nice thing to do at the end of somebody's speech. There's also the thumbs up. So if somebody says something's good, you could perhaps do the thumbs up again. Giving them some visual feedback is quite nice. And also under the more button, you can raise your hand. Now raise your hand is when you have a problem and you want the organisers, the administrators, so to speak, of the meeting to know that you've got a problem you can raise your hand. If you solve the problem you can and you can see there's a little hand icon in the middle of the screen which is neat I like and then if you do actually solve it you can lower your hand so that you're not in the way or it may be that somebody will ask for a vote and you can raise your hands for the vote I don't know that's up to your Toastmaster but at least as far as a mobile phone is concerned this is quite a neat way of running the system and actually I like it and as I said it has a good camera so as long as you have a good wireless connection to your router, hopefully in the same room when you're doing the presentation, this is actually a really neat way of doing it. But there's one thing I would suggest you can do if you can, and that is if you have earphones or earbuds or even crude wired earbuds, I would suggest you use them rather than worrying about using the speaker. Then if there are any feedback issues with other people talking and whatever, it's not going to come out of your mic, uh, out of your speaker, back into your microphone and cause feedback loops and all that funny noises, which sound like this when you speak. You start getting an echo, and then echo echoes on the echo, and it's horrible. And that's what we are trying to avoid. But that is how you use the mobile phone. Now the nice thing is when you've whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So I need to find the application now. Um, there it is. When the meeting finishes, or if you want to leave the meeting early, you can see the leave is at the top right hand corner. So I can leave the meeting. I've now gone, and you might have heard the I've left message um, sound go. When you go to join the meeting again, you see there's a little pull down menu and it gives you the history of the places you've been before so once you've joined one meeting you won't need to remember that number again it's remembered it for you and I can join the meeting again without having typed that meeting number again again and there's a ding dong as I join well, that's the last thing I will tell you enjoy your Toastmasters meetings and uh, I might even see you on one but that's all for now Thank you very much.